Have you been wondering how to become a niche expert? If you've always dreamed about boosting your sales and leave competitors to dust, then you've got to have a strategy in place. And that strategy is about building trust. Because once you build trust with your audience, it's then very easy to make sales. But listen up, this isn't rocket science either. I personally did it and I know the exact steps to do it. And the good news is I can show you how to do it in any niche market. It's proven to work all the time. It's the shortcut to gaining trust and authority in a very short span of time. Okay, so let's talk about instant niche profits, instant niche profits. So basically, in any information marketing strategy, let's assume that for the sake of this strategy that we're talking about tonight, that you don't have a list. And I, re I recognize that that's not everybody, that a lot of people on this call, and in most cases, you're going to have one. So I think that we'll be safe if we work under the assumption that you don't have one, because we're a little more conservative. And then everything we do tonight will work for you if you already have a list. But if you don't have one, this will, this will work for you. Well, let's assume that you currently don't have a product line that you are selling. So in other words, you have not developed a brand as identified by the number of products that you have or as identified by your string of products. So in other words, your brand is really whatever you have produced so far. So if you've produced three products on social media, it doesn't matter what you say about your brand. Your brand is social media until you start producing other things. You know, hopefully that makes sense. So if you don't have a product line right now, what we're going to talk about tonight will still benefit you. Let's assume that you are not yet established in your niche. So if you're not necessarily a household name, if you don't necessarily have people coming to a launch to find out what you're doing, then you're not yet established. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of us are not established enough where people are, let's say, waking up in the morning trying to find out what we're going to do. Right? And that's ultimately what we want to do when we're marketing information. Let's assume that you're not being asked to be interviewed right now. So if, 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 if that's not the case, then whoever you are in the niche right now, that means then that if that, that at this point nobody's seeking you out, then they don't necessarily consider you to be a player. And that's fine. Most, you know, most information marketers, most content creators are not being interviewed. Most people do not, are not being sought out. So that's you. That doesn't necessarily put you in the minority. I mean, it kind of just kind of makes you like everybody else. So don't, don't feel like you should be there at this point. Um, it really is a chosen few. But what we're saying, though, is that this will work for you if you're not that person. Um, let's assume that you haven't created much content. So you're not a blogger. You're not a, a video creator. You don't have a lot of content out there. So if, that, if that's you, right, th what, I, what I'm going to talk about tonight will still benefit you. Let's assume that you have not had sustained success. So maybe you've had a couple of launches. Maybe you've had some services you've launched. Maybe you've had some things that you've done. It's, it's generated some profit, um, but you haven't been able to kind of string them back to back. You haven't had back to back successes or a lot of back to back successes. That's fine. This will still, this will still benefit you. And, and here's why I'm spelling all this out because typically when you, you hear a strategy, it's laid out. It assumes that you have all these things, right? So, so kind of the first thing that you kind of hear is, well, in order to make this work, you have to have, to have a list. Well, then for, for some people, that's going to disqualify them and that's going to cause them a tune out. So that's not going to be the case what we're going to be talking about with this particular way of marketing information. Let's assume that you have some form of information overload right now. So I think that's a safe assumption for everybody. So if you have more information coming in than right now, you know what to do with. Now, if that's you, if I were to ask you if that's you right now, you have more information coming in than you know how to make sense of right now. So you don't necessarily even know where, what bucket to put it in all of the time. You have emails, you have webinars, you have messages, you have things to do, you have social media, you have all these things, and you're trying to figure out on a daily basis where you put all that stuff. Yeah, Eileen says really too much. So if you feel like that's you, right, if, you, if that describes you, I want you to put the number two in the question box. So, so if, you, if you have that, this will still help you, right? So, 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 so again... What we're going to lay out tonight is something specific. You're going to be able to still fit it into what you're doing. 
And what we're going to do is enter into a niche based strategy. So one thing that you are going to have to do is even if you don't have one that is a favorite of yours, you do have to pick a market. You do have to pick something that you, I would even say that you're necessarily interested in something that you feel like is going to be profitable. Because sometimes before you get really get started in information marketing, before you can get to what they call that passion point, you really do have to kind of figure out what's going to work. And sometimes that's not always going to be where you are the most passionate. It could just be the place where you provide the most value to people. It could be the place where people get the most from you. It could be the place where when you put something out, people feel they feel like they've really got something and they're willing to pay you for it. So that's not always going to be the place where you feel the most, uh, the, the most uh, giving back. It's not always going to be the place where you feel the most, uh, the most love from people. It, ju- it could just be the place where you're, you're generating the most, uh, 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 the best on behalf of other people. I, I also want to spell this out. Now, what I'm going to take, we're going to talk about tonight. We'll work outside of, what I call the business opportunity niche. And this is what I call the business opportunity niche. What I mean is uh, typically what we call internet marketing, what I call network marketing, what I call, let's say, the JVZoo, Warrior Plus, Zaxa, ClickBank crowd. If, if that's where you fall or, you, or the blogging crowd, if you, if you fall into that, in that category, what we're going to talk about tonight will still work outside of that. So, 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 but, but it'll work outside of that, that if. Right. If the following is true, if the following is true, if wherever the niche you are in, people are already buying information. So, again, this does not have to be your favorite place in the world to be. But you do have to confirm that people are already buying information of some kind. And if they're, because if you're buying information of some kind, you can create some kind of information that they'll want to buy. You can create something that they'll come to. You'll create something that they can be interested in. If you've confirmed that people are buying information because they're buying information, they're either trying to solve something or they're trying to, they're, they're, they're trying to get rid of something, right? Um, let, let's say that if your, your website just is not brand, uh, spanking new, right? So you're getting some visits. So, so in other words, even, and even if that's, that's, that's the case, there, there's some ways that we can work around, around that, but, but this will work as long as your website is not absolutely brand new. Um, you need to be able to look at Alexa and, and, and just to determine not necessarily where your competition is. You need to be able to determine where your website is based on what Alexa says. Right. So, so determine your Alexa rank. And this is something you can do pretty much tonight. You go to uh, just put in Alexa um, website ranking into Google and then put your main website in there to determine where your Alexa rank is. I'll tell you why that's important here in a minute. One of the things that you can do to build up that number, one of the things that you can do in order to raise your ranking is you can, you can, you can either do free downloads or if you're already launching products, you can drive people back to your main site. One of the, one of the things that you want to do is let's say that you launch a product or let's say you have a service. You want to have your thank you page on your main website. I want to make that clear because this will drive up your Alexa ranking on one site, the visits themselves. And so most people have those things. They have them scattered across the Internet. Sometimes they'll have the landing page on one site. Sometimes they'll have the thank you page on another site. And what that does is that kind of scatters the, I'd say, the, the, the traffic that you're getting. And if you can't at all, right, then sometimes it doesn't make sense to do this. But if it does make sense, if you can do it, put your thank you page on the site where you're trying to, let's say, promote the most, because again, you will then be considered, at least in the eyes of Alexa, that 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 your site is actually getting traffic. And again, I'll, I'll explain to you why this is important in a minute. And 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 then, uh, this is a sister point to that. Try to direct traffic to one main website, for, at least for the for the time you're trying to execute what I'm talking about here tonight. Try to direct your traffic to one site. So again, I, I, most people. Right. Because WordPress is free, because we can we you know, some of us have virtual private servers, you know, services, servers are cheap and and storage is cheap. So people tend to have more than one main website. I'm going to suggest that you start thinking about however your brand works, 
trying to direct people to one main website. And even if you have to, let's say, put subdomains and subdirectories in order to talk about the different brands, that you do that over and above trying to have different names. Because quite frankly, you are probably your brand. And 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 the I I'd say in the early days of of internet marketing, the early days of the web, I really think you had to have separate websites if you're going to be doing something separate, right? Something that was slightly different, and it would help you if you had, let's say, a website that uh, uh, um, that that was that was the name so people could remember it. But I mean, these days, I mean, people get people get traffic through search, people get traffic through social media, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that you have to have that domain name to say what the brand is. You can have the domain uh, of your, let's say your name or whatever your main brand is, and you can have a subdomain, right? Or subdirectory with the other brand. Now, if you get what I just said, please put the number three in the question box. If you understand what I said. So, 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 so again, um, uh, if you can try to direct some of your trap, most of your traffic, at least for a period of time to one site, as opposed to 10 of them, to, in, in, as opposed to two of them, uh, um, uh, try to do that. And what you really have to do uh, wh for what we're going to talk about tonight is you got to you try to get your number, Alexa number down to 1 million, right? So you got to be in the, in the top 1 million sites on Alexa in order to, in order to do what we're going to talk about tonight. So you got to try to get your number down there and, and you'll, you'll, you'll see why that's important. And if you, if you can do this, right? If you can do this, then you can do it you can work inside of a niche outside of the business opportunity niche. Okay. So that, that's why all this is important. So in other words, we can operate outside of the business opportunity niche. If these things are true, if you can get your Alexa rank ranking down to uh, under 1 million, it's not all that hard, right? It's, it's definitely doable, right? So I don't want you to feel like it's some, it's some grand, uh, some grand plan. You can get under a million, right? With some activity. Now, um, you, you, you can, you can, you can do this and you can also do what we're talking about inside the information marketing niche. It's just that it's going to be more competitive, right? So it's always better if you can to try to operate outside of the business opportunity niche. Even if you're going to work within the small business niche or the local business niche or your local market, that's even easier uh, sometimes and less competitive than, than the information marketing niche. It's just, it's just straight on. Um, all, all fire competitive all the time, right? So, so, but you can do this, just understand it's going to be more competitive. And we're going to focus on the website, um, help a reporter or Harrow. How many of y'all have heard of Harrow, right? Or help a reporter, help a reporter out, right? And, uh, and, and you don't, you don't have to go there for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of talk you through what we're going to do. Right. Um, and, and so, and so we are going to focus on that site for the sake of this strategy. And we're talking about how can you get instant activity inside of a niche? How can you get fast activity without being a fast money business? Okay. You got to have a, a way to drive traffic, right? So you got to, you got to get a traffic driving medium. You got to get something that will generate traffic that will generate activity that you're producing. Um, so in other words, where can you attract interested people and keep them interested? That's you personally, right? Where can you attract interested people and keep them interested? Is, is that going to be uh, online radio? So, you, so can you get on an online radio show and can you keep people interested? Can you keep people's attention? Um, can you do a podcast and keep people's attention? Now, again, don't get thrown off by the fact that, um, you, you know, people say that you can't make money with podcasts and it takes years. That, that's not even all that important. If you can get people to your podcast and you can keep them interested, that's going to be the most important thing. Um, YouTube. And I just read something today in the news and it wasn't a, a, an internet marketing publication. It wasn't even a business publication. It was something that just said that people on YouTube the business model, people tend to struggle in poverty, right? Um, and, and obviously, the thing that they don't know is there's so many other ways to monetize YouTube than just getting, let's say, AdSense revenue, right? There's a whole lot more you can do with it. In fact, probably the most efficient way to generate cash flow is going to be to use YouTube, but not to be looking for AdSense. 
if you can get people to read your blog and be interested, right? So you don't have to worry about all this stuff, right? You don't have to do all these things. If you can get people to your blog, they read it on a regular basis, they look for it, then you don't, you know, again, I mean, you can, you can, as long as you have a way of driving traffic. Um, if you, if you're a Facebook Live person, right? If people come to your Facebook Lives because of you, the way, what you say and the stuff you do, you have a traffic driving medium. Do you have an Instagram? Do you drive traffic using Instagram? Again, you don't have to do all these things, but you do have to have at least one. You have to have a way of driving people to someplace based on something that you're doing. Um, or, now, you, of course, you can use some combination. Now, again, it, you know, your blog, your WordPress site really ought to be home base, right? So if you, even if you're doing, <clears throat> let's say, uh, a YouTube channel, you need to be driving traffic back to your site. You should have one site you're trying to drive traffic back to. Again, um, that that's where you're going to, again, generate the activity that you're going to be able to use on Hero. Um I just, I just kind of skipped ahead, but, um, ranking is not going to be the most important thing here. So you're not trying to get ranked in search. W what's most important in this case is, is creating something that's so, that, that's so cool that people want to share. Now it doesn't have to be cool to everybody. It just has to be cool to the people that want to hear from you. So again, if, if your, if your whole vibe, let's say if your whole market, if your whole approach is to talk to, let's say seniors in Florida, well, then you need to be cool to them. You don't have to be cool to millennials. You don't have to be cool to boomers. You don't have to be cool to, um, you, you know, to, to Gen Xers. You need to be cool to seniors in Florida. That's who you need to be cool to. And they need to be drawn to what you're saying. You don't have to have a million people. And I think we talked about that before, you know, Kevin Kelly and the whole uh, the, the whole movement toward uh, having 1000 true fans is really all you need. It really is right. You don't have to have a lot of a lot of, uh, let's say, a, a gazillion people you just had to have a lot of really kind of really loyal people kind of following your stuff. And, and, and the thing is, now, when it comes to driving this traffic or creating the content to drive the traffic, as long as you can do it consistently. Now, here's where you start talking about whether or not it's a passion or not. Um, you do need to be able to excuse me, be consistent about it. So, so you can't hate it and you can't have it so that it's a drudgery because then you're just not going to do it com consistently. Now, that's where I start to feel like, well, you, you sort of do have to have some affinity toward it. You do have to have a way that at least it motivates you to want to do it. And it can't just be for the money because the money at sometimes, you know, when you don't want to get up and get going on it or when you don't have to fight through being sick about it, then you will not do it if it's just for the money, right? So um, you, you need to get people to schedule their lives around you. So in other words, when you're, when you're, when you're using this traffic driving medium, what you want to do is you want to make it serial. And we've talked about that before where it's got to be, it's, it's got to be that at nine o'clock on Wednesday evening, this thing is going to happen that you do, right? Your training, your podcast, your blog post is going to be released on Tuesday mornings, every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, you have to, you really do have to have one element of your business that is like this. Because again, you want people to have it in their brains. They've got to try to schedule their lives around the stuff you're doing. Now, again, it takes a long time for people to get it in your brain, in their brain that you do this thing. But when you repeat it over and over and over again, and you begin to show up over and over and over again, you will begin to drive traffic to that place based on the fact that you are doing this thing um, and people can schedule their lives around you. Now, does everybody get that? Or does everybody understand that? I mean, we're still a TV society. We're still ba we still base our lives on how television works. And even though a lot of us don't watch television anymore, we still do kind of work on that on that clock, the factory schedule. Right. We need to have a time and a place where people can expect our stuff. And again, I, and, and we, I hope that we I've kind of made this clear. Focus on, on a particular niche. Don't be really general. Try to narrow it down so that you only attract the interested people. You don't want everybody. Right. So when you start talking about, you know, trying to drive traffic, don't start picking topics that you think, well, this is really going to attract everybody. Don't we don't want everybody. You don't want everybody coming to your thing. You want only those people. And if you got to grow it two people at a time, 
grow at two people at a time. I mean, typically you're going to grow at faster than that. When you do some of the stuff we're going to be talking about, but again, you have to be willing, I think, you've got to be willing to do it, right? Even if one or two people come at a time and they come to you and stick, right? Ultimately, you will grow faster that way than if you try to create something that's really general and you start bringing people from everywhere to come to something that, again, is 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 not directly helpful to a particular pe- a grant, uh, a group of people. Okay, you got to have interesting content, right? It has to be interesting. And again, only has to be interesting to the people that you're attracting. And so here's where we're going to start using Harold, right? We're going to start using Harold to find interviewees. And that's why you really do have to have this number down under a million, right? Because Harold, that's Harold's number. Harold's number is that you got to be, your Alexa rankings got to be low, below, below a million. And so in order to get interviewees, um, you are then going to start to work with the topics that, again, you know people are interested in. You want to stick to questions, right, when you go to Harrow that, that, that people really want answers to. So when you start talking about putting out stories, you're going to do a, a series on something, you have to ask Harrow to find you people to talk about things people want answers to. Um, you try, you, you, when you, when you go to Harrow, right, you want to try to get as a, as a reporter or as a show, as a show person, you want to have enough people so that you can keep a regular show going. So you can keep a regular blog going. So you can keep a regular, uh, a regular podcast going. So you can keep something regular going. You got to book enough people. So in other words, if, if you put a topic out there and you request, you only have two or three people to kind of reply back to you. You got to put something else out there because you got to get this flow of people. You got to get it coming to you so that you have way too many people to evaluate. Because then you will then be able to keep a flow of interesting content based on the questions that you are asking and based on the questions that people are giving you to ask. Um, now, my, my suggestion to you is however you do this, you decide you're going to going to do these interviews written. If you decide you're going to do these interviews uh, uh, by, by audio or video, do them in bunches. Right. Do these interviews in bunches. So don't do them. Let's say, well, I, I can, I'm available on Tuesday morning at, and I'm available on Wednesday night. I'm available on Thursday afternoon. That's a surefire way of burning out. Number one. Number two, it's also a surefire way of never having enough people to interview. What you've got to do is you've got to say, Hey, you know what? I, you know, I do interviews on Tuesdays from, from, from 11 until 7 p.m. and just make it all day. So again, maybe somebody can't do it Tuesday this week. Maybe they can't do it a month from now. Maybe they can't do it until, let's say, a year, uh, 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 you know, three or four months from now. Fine, book them, right? Get them in there. What's going to happen is you are going to have eventually start filling out a schedule that will work for you and will help you to create content and it will help you to then start looking at how you are booking these guests. Again, report them in bunches. Try to keep it on one day. If you want to move to two, try to move it to two. But again, I like, I personally think that if you can try to keep your interviews on one day at specific times, you will eventually start filling up those times. Um, now that doesn't mean you release the content that way. Now you release the content on a regular basis, right? So this, this is where it gets a little, a little tricky. But you want, still want to release the content on a regular basis. Record the interview, let's say, on Tuesdays. But then release it right, on a regular basis, right? Release it on, let's say, every, every Monday. Again, the serial method. You're, 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 so it doesn't matter how, when you get the interviews done, as long as you get it done ahead of time. You can start releasing the content on a serial basis. At the end of the session, this is really important and something that I can tell you you're, you're not going to feel comfortable with and you're going to feel like I'm already, I've already asked this person to do too much. But, but by the time that you've gotten and you've gotten the best, uh, let's say content out of them, then ask them, right? Ask them to share it among their following. Now, what that does is that means that you've got to try to, during the course of your interview, you got to try to make them look good, right? You've got to try to make them, uh, you've got to try to help them to sound good. You've got to ask them questions that, again, cause them to have to dig for a good answer. And that when they dig for that good answer, they sound really intelligent and that they look good. So your, your goal is really to kind of make them look super, super, super cool. And then what you're going to be doing 
when people come to hear this interview, right? However you do it, if you bring them through your WordPress site, you need to be collecting leads. So if you don't have opt-in forms everywhere, you've got to get them on your site. So people start coming. And again, this is a, another reason why you really want to start having one site as opposed to 10. I'm all for having 10 sites. I'm all having 10, for having 10 brands. But if you, if you try to focus your attention on, on one site, it will be easy to collect leads because you will say at the end of the show, Hey, you know what? Um, go right over to, let's say, um, EileenRoth.com forward slash, uh, guests, right? Today's guests. And, uh, and, and you'll get, and I'll make sure that you get a copy of today's interview, whatever the case is, right? But you've gotta, you've gotta be collecting leads. So the people that are coming to read you, people that are coming to listen to you, people that are coming to watch you, whatever they're doing, whenever they're getting this, and this is gonna be good content, right? Because you're getting, you're getting people based on the questions people are asking you, and you're going out to Harrow to find people that wanna be interviewed. Right. These are people that want to be interviewed. So you've got to be collecting leads. So, so you, you, you've got to be as, as, as let's say vigilant about collecting leads as you are about getting interviews. Get the best people as you can. Right. But, but, but again, be willing to work down the list. So if you can't get, let's say, um, I, you know, maybe you can't get Oprah. <laughs> right. So keep working your way down the list. Don't be afraid though to ask for anybody. Right. Some people are not going to be on Harrow. And so you're going to have to ask for everybody. Don't think that you're too big for your britches. Uh, be, be bigger than your britches. Right. Get the people um, that you want. Right. To answer specific question. Now, if they have information product, don't be don't be afraid to ask. Ask them if you can be their affiliate. Right. Do they have an affiliate program? Um, sell their sell their stuff. Right. Tell them, listen, I'll sell your stuff all, all year long if I can be part of your affiliate program and then do it. Right. Put it, you know, put their, put their affiliate uh, product on, uh, on their, you know, on the page where their interview is. Right. And make it prominent. So when people come to that page, they can buy their product and then you're going to get, get affiliate uh, commissions. Um, one thing I do want to do, and I don't know if I said this uh, before I move on, and maybe I did, is you can create, and I think I might have said this later on in the presentation, but if I did, um, I, I want to say this now as an online marketer. Right. As an online marketer, you already know how to create an affiliate program. This is really something that is not very, I'd say it's not done very much. And just because somebody doesn't have uh, an affiliate program, you can still create one for them. Right. And as an online marketer, as an information marketer, you already know how to do these things. You want to put your tools in place so that when somebody comes to, to, to buy that product, they get paid instantly and you get paid instantly, right? You know how to set that up. You can set it up to JVZoo, Warrior Plus. You can get the WP Affiliate. Um, you can get any of those programs, Thrivecart, do something so that, again, it doesn't matter if they don't have an affiliate program. You set one up based on your knowledge, right? So if you get what I'm saying, put the number four in the question box, right? I don't think that's beyond anybody here. I think that what happens is we sort of think, okay, well, they don't have an affiliate program, so I'm not going to do anything. Well, don't do that, right? Put, if, if they don't have one, put one together. Again, um, you're, you're, you're in this, right? You're in this niche to make money. So it's not just, I mean, I mean yes, I mean, you're, you're, you're delivering great content, you're delivering value, but yes, you ought to be paid for that value. This is a Herald listing. So this is what goes out to the people who are looking to be interviewed. So every day they're going to get an email that looks like this. I think Eileen, Eileen's probably familiar with this, right? So, so if you, so, so the people that want to be interviewed, um, they're going to have, they're going to get an email that looks like this. They're going to get all kinds of opportunities based on their niche. Um, here you see some here, um, millennial homeowners, um, Thought leaders in financial technology, auto claims, spike in premiums. So if you can answer that, yeah. And, uh, and they send it out three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening, Eileen says. That's right. And so, and so, and so there, there, somebody is going to see your query if you can get it in there. Now you got to get in there, right? You got to get in there. You got to put a query out there based on the people you want to talk to. I'm talking about trying to generate some instant activity. Um, Here's what now when they when they actually look at it, here's what one looks like. So they're gonna look at something like this. Here's what a query looks like. Here's what yours is gonna look like when you put it out there. And you're gonna say, hey, you know what? I want something that looks like this. Here's the people that I want to look at. And I want to have them 
uh, I want to have them by this date. Right. So again, um, you're trying to find people to answer the questions you want them to answer, and you're trying to find them on a routine basis, and you're trying to build them up. Right. You're trying to build up your follow. Okay. So um, you're you're looking at uh, uh, just a list. Uh, now this is just the business and finance um, uh, 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 niche. Right. Um, they're, they're obviously more than that. And and so and so basically, what you're trying to do here is you're going to have yours there, right? You're looking at a listing, but you're going to put yours there too, and you want to make it interesting so that when people look at it, they say, "Oh man, I can be interviewed on that." And maybe they're a Kindle author, maybe they are a a podcaster themselves, and they can talk about it. So listen, what you're doing is you're leveraging, right? You're helping them to get more exposure. You are, and, and, and one of the reasons why Alexa, uh, the Alexa rank is important because you want, you don't want to waste these people's time, right? So you do want to have traffic coming to the site. Now, the, the whole goal is not to fool anybody, right? You want to be able to kind of have people coming, but you want to make sure they get something out of it. And they really should get some traffic if you do things right. Okay, so what else do you need? So, 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 you, so you've got your content, you need stuff to sell. Um, find the information products in your niche. We already know how to do that. Um, ClickBank has multiple niches, so you don't have to worry about trying to find something in the make money online or business opportunity niche. ClickBank has plenty of stuff. Um, look inside of some of the other marketplaces, so JVZoo, Warrior Plus, and some of the other places like Zaxa. Look inside of there, right, if you have a niche, and then, you know, buy a PLR, right? So if you got to put something together, there's nothing available, just buy, buy a PLR offer, Right and and put that and make it available on your site. Again, typically you're all going to be able to find the affiliate offer. And sometimes, you know, if you can get a PLR offer on, let's say, in a niche, let's say it's I don't know, emotional eating. Let's say, right? You can get something on that. Put that put that sales page on your domain, right? And, and as soon as the call is over, direct people to that place, right? Does everybody get that? Does everybody get what I'm saying there? If you get what I'm saying there, put the number five in the question box. Right? If you understand that. Okay, so now, um, and then, uh, and, okay, and this is what I just said before, right? So let's say they don't have an they don't have an affiliate program. Your guest create one for them, right? So and you can do that with anything. So if you have Thrive Card, if you have anything you have, use it to create um, a a uh, an affiliate program for them. I have Thrive Card. WP Affiliate also has one. I'm gonna say you want to be careful about using JVZoo. Because again, um, uh, if you start inviting people over there, um, they're going to get they're going to get emailed by JVZoo, right? Unless they check off a box, and most people don't check it off. They don't, you know, they're not paying attention and all that stuff. So, so I'm going to say that 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 if, if you're outside of the make money online niche, uh, you want to be careful. Let's say about using something in the business opportunity niche because you know it's going to happen. Right, you and I know how to filter out those emails. Um, most people are, don't know how to do that when they first get started or their first their first taste on the platform, right? As a customer, and you don't want to do that to your customers in order when they, when they first get started. Okay, and then oh yeah, now you really do. Uh, and again, I know that I mean, you, you probably kind of feel like okay, this is just Charles saying this. Um, it's not. Um, you do have to create products. Um, use the extra content you have to create your own products. Example, um, uh, if you have not seen it, how many of you all have seen the rise to the top dot com, the the uh, the video podcast? If if you have not, I want I want to take I want uh, to do to uh, suggest to you that after this call, you take a look at that podcast. And I want you. What I want you to see is that some of the content is turned into courses, right? Also, um, uh, I, I suggest you look at Mixergy.com. You're going to see Andrew Warner. He's going to ta- he's going to be doing interviews in some cases, and what he does is he takes those interviews and turns them into what he calls master classes. So keep your interviews interesting. Um, focus on the specific and not on the general. So in other words, when I say that, um, you don't want to say, well, you know, I want you to talk about, uh, you know, we're here to talk about coffee today. What you want to do is you want to kind of focus on the day that they started drinking coffee. You want to focus on the day that they knew that they were going to open a coffee shop, where they were going to open this coffee shop in Seattle, right? Focus on the specific and not on the general. Focus on stories over principles. So yeah, principles are great, but focus on the story. How they get to be 
um, how'd they get their superpowers? Who they, how they become who they became? Focus on the story, if, even if you're trying to get the information. Bundle up the interviews around themes, right? So in other words, if you're going to sell, if you're going to sell themes, right? You got a bunch of, let's say you look back over your, your interviews, you've got, let's say, five affiliate marketers, right? Or you've got five people who dealt with weight loss. So what are you going to do? You're going to bundle up a weight loss, you're going to uh, do a weight loss special. Right, you're gonna send that to your subscriber list. Create use for courses. Um, you, you know, if you if you already have the interview content, add in notes. Right, if you need to have it transcribed, add in cheat sheets. Right, actionable cheat sheets. Um, make them tangible with graphics. Right, and you already know how to do that. Um, all you got to do is use some use some three D graphics to make them uh, to make them uh, stand out, and then. Um, of course, you need to keep your list engaged. This is going to work at all, right? So you got to stay at the top of the niche, stay on top of the niche. And th- here's what, what, what ultimately has to happen. Um, you and I have to become uh, really obsessed with the niche, right? So whatever we're obsessed with, that's where we're going to have the most success. And, and so we've got to get obsessed about this niche. So we've got to be – because the, the way you keep – your list engaged and the way you keep your interviews interesting is you have to be, I'd say, more knowledgeable than them about most stuff, right? Resident expert on lots of stuff in the niche, right? So you've got to begin to eat, drink, and sleep the niche, whatever it is. Um, email on a daily basis, right? Send emails on a daily basis. Provide help to the people that, that, that require help always, Right, whoever asks will provide help. If what you need to do is you need to create, let's say, a, a, a training program, right, so that so that people can come to your uh, to your training program in order to get it, then then listen, sell it, right. But 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 provide help to the people that want it. Provide inspiration, right. Give people something to aspire to, um, and then do it your own style, right. And finally, you know, something I've been reading lately is by a gentleman named Donald Miller. Um, uh, called Building a Story Brand. I've really been talking this book up. I mean, if you haven't read it, I really suggest you read it. You make the customer the hero, right? Make the customer the hero. And then be personal, right? Be personal. Um, so, so in other words, try to relate to people as a human being. Um, don't be inaccessible. Don't, don't, you know, don't be this really corporate sort of, sort of, uh, uh, guy or girl, right? Uh, be, be the, uh, be the, be the really personal, uh, sort of, hey, this is this is the you know this is the lady that I would I would uh, invite to my house. This is the guy that I would go to lunch with. Uh, this is somebody that I would you know if I had to if I had to drive to Texas, I would invite this person. Right, that's who you want to be. You, you you need to ask for every day and deserve the sale. Right, ask for and deserve the sale. Um, uh, whether the, whether you you're providing a product or a bonus to an affiliate offer, provide ten times the value. Try to give away more information. Than you could ever get paid for it. So part of your job in in creating content is you need to be giving away more than you could ever get paid for, right? Give away more than you could ever get paid for. Try to seek out one aspect of your client's highest good. What do I mean by that? So in other words, um, you're not going to try to save the universe, right? You're not even going to try to save your client from the universe. You want to pick one aspect of your client's life. Right? Let's say list building. And you're gonna, you're gonna teach them how to master list building. Pick one aspect of your client's highest good. What are you trying to do for your people? Right? What are you trying to do? Um, maybe they don't know how to sell. You are going to help them to learn how to sell. Don't try to be all things to all people. Don't even try to be all things to some people. Focus on where you provide the most value. And here's the key, right? Here's the key. Um, whenever there's an offer, right, in terms of asking for the sale, you need to bonus it up, add premiums, case studies to every part of the funnel so the value exceeds what's being asked for by the price, right? So, so again, I, I, you and I have to do that, right? That's, that's the way it works in digital marketing, um, especially information marketing. We continue to add, add the relevant, and again, so, just, so don't, don't just put stuff in the package just to put it in there. Add relevant bonuses, premiums, and case studies to all aspects of the funnel until the value you're asking for or you're promoting far outseeds, far exceeds what's being asked for in the price. Right? That's that's the way you ask for and deserve the sale. Right? And so and so that's something that you you and I we have to practice that on a daily basis. Right? So 
And when we do that, we can do that inside of any niche and we can do that um, consistently. Um, we don't have to be involved in the make money online niche. We can be involved in whatever niche we want to be in. 